Let's talk about Kenny Pickett. This is a controversial topic amongst the Steelers fandom. I'll probably get a lot of flack and pushback for this video, in my opinions, from the five people that watch it. But I'm here to tell you, dear viewer, that the Pittsburgh Steelers done did Kenny Pickett dirty. We're going to start with the obvious. For the first two years of Kenny Pickett's professional career, the Steelers paired him with inept offensive coordinator Matt Canada. You know, Matt Canada. The guy whose offense revolved around throwing the ball five yards and hoping the receiver could make a play. You know, Matt Canada. The guy who couldn't utilize a tight end even if his life depended on it. You know, Matt Canada. The guy whose job it is to score points, but doesn't actually like it when you score points. That's the Steelers' first mistake. Pairing Kenny Pickett and Matt Canada. You could argue it's their second actual mistake behind drafting Kenny Pickett in the first round to begin with, but I digress. You've paired Kenny Pickett and are now wasting his development with this bad offensive coordinator. Now, anybody who watches the Matt Canada offense knows that Matt Canada is a garbage offensive coordinator. I thought Ben Roethlisberger was a washed up quarterback his last season paired with Matt Canada. I said to myself, the man's arm strength is gone. He can't throw the ball more than five yards. They're tailoring the offense so Ben can run it and it's not working. That was my thought. Until the very next season, I saw the exact same offense. Five yard dink and dunk plays. Garbage. Matt Canada made a Hall of Fame quarterback look like a dumpster fire. And yet they paired rookie Kenny Pickett with Matt Canada and put him in the same type of offense. That's an immense failure right there. I don't understand how people can't see that Matt Canada was at least 70% of the problem in Pittsburgh. You can't just pair a rookie quarterback with an inept offensive coordinator. Matt Canada didn't know what he was doing. He's not fit to run a high school offense, let alone a professional one. And yet it's Kenny Pickett's fault. We've painted Kenny Pickett as the villain here. You've given him a year and a half in that system, this dink and dunk offense. I can't stress how bad the Matt Canada offense was. It's why he got fired mid-season. After they fired Canada, Kenny Pickett gets injured and spends the rest of the season on the bench. Take that for what you will. A lot of people like to say that Pickett was benched in favor of Mason Rudolph. In reality, I think Mike Tomlin was just riding the hot hand. Mason Rudolph's winning, might as well ride him into the playoffs. Why not? So mistake number one, they paired Kenny Pickett with Matt Canada. Mistake number two came this offseason when Mike Tomlin said that his starting quarterback was on the roster. Well, at some point, Kenny Pickett was the only quarterback on the roster. The Steelers then clarified that they were looking at bringing in competition at the quarterback position, which means that Kenny Pickett would have to actually earn the job, which that's fine. You're allowed to do that. So everybody anticipated a quarterback competition. Then the Steelers bring in Russell Wilson. Great signing, by the way. Like getting Russell Wilson at like $1.92 million for one season. Good job, Omar Khan. Anyway, the Steelers bring in Russell Wilson. And then they walk back this whole aspect of competition. This is the problem. The Steelers said that there would be a competition. And then they inferred that Russell Wilson was going to be the starter. Okay, so that's... That's double speak here. Like, you can't just say there's going to be a competition and then not have a competition. That's misleading. I think any normal person would be mad at this if they were in Kenny Pickett's shoes. Like, let's say at your job, your boss comes in and says, you're the guy. And then your boss says, well, we're actually going to hire somebody else and you two can compete for the position. And then even before you start to compete for the position, your manager says, actually, we're going to go with this guy. Any normal person wouldn't be very happy with that at all. I think Kenny Pickett experiences the scrutiny because he's a professional athlete and he should play for the position, which fine. But the Pittsburgh Steelers shouldn't have put up a mask of a competition between Russell Wilson and Kenny Pickett without actually having the competition. That's a cop out. So that's mistake number two. To begin with, they derailed Kenny Pickett's career with Matt Canada, and then they pretty much benched him. How do people not see where the Pittsburgh Steelers went wrong here? They drafted a quarterback who needed development, put him with the worst possible person to develop him as a quarterback, and then just kind of like gave up on him. If I were Kenny Pickett, I would have probably wanted to be traded too. Because at this point, you're in an environment where it doesn't seem like the organization cares about you, nor do they want you. Because not only did you have to deal with Russell Wilson coming in and getting handed the job, you also had to deal with the whisperings of the Steelers 
possibly trading for Justin Fields. Which also, Omar Khan, good signing there. At this point, the organization didn't support Kenny Pickett's development, and then they kind of threw him away. So my understanding is Kenny Pickett requested a trade and ultimately got sent to the Eagles. Now, it's a toss-up if he actually asked to get sent to the Eagles or if he got traded there on purpose. Either way, he is entrenched as the number two quarterback behind Jalen Hurts. So regardless if he asked for the trade or just got traded there to begin with, he's entrenched as the number two option behind Jalen Hurts. And people give him a lot of flack for that. Well, you could have fought for the starting job in Pittsburgh. Well, I don't think he ever had a shot at the starting job in Pittsburgh. Now he goes to an Eagles team, which has a winning culture in place, by the way. Like, that team knows what they're doing. And he's the number two quarterback, which at this point, he was going to be the number two quarterback in Pittsburgh, possibly the number three quarterback. As a number two quarterback in Philadelphia, he gets the chance to develop in an organization that knows what it's doing. He's not a misfit toy. He has a clear, defined role at this point with an organization that actually seems to want him and care about his development. He gets to stay in Pennsylvania. It's a win-win for Kenny Pickett. He no longer has to deal with the scrutiny of the Pittsburgh Steelers fans and media alike. He doesn't have to deal with that anymore. He doesn't have to deal with beating Russell Wilson or losing his job to Justin Fields. He can go to Philadelphia, be the number two guy, develop his skills, and just continue his NFL career. Even if it is as a backup, he doesn't have to deal with the garbage that comes with being in Pittsburgh. Because there is a lot of garbage that comes with being in Pittsburgh. Now this isn't the first time the Pittsburgh Steelers have done something like this. They kind of had this history of doublespeak in the Mike Tomlin era, where they tell the player one thing and then do the complete opposite thing on the field. Uh, James Harrison, for instance. Last year, he played in Pittsburgh. I believe it was the first year that TJ Watt was on the roster. They told James Harrison that he had a role in the defense every week. He had a role in the defense. He had a role in the defense. But every week, he got less and less and less and less playing time. Which, I mean, if you want to play your rookies and your young guys, that's cool. But don't tell the man that he has a role in the defense, and then don't define the role. If you're going to give the man less and less playing time, elaborate on that. Like, why is he getting less and less playing time? Should he be there? Ultimately, no. James Harrison got cut, and then went to the New England Patriots to go on, I think, to the Super Bowl that year. And Pittsburgh was so mad. Like, what did you expect? They didn't define James Harrison's role at all. They gave him less and less and less playing time. They didn't want the man. They just wanted the man on the roster. So he went to a conference rival and ultimately did well there. And Pittsburgh Steelers fans hated the man for it. Can you blame him? I wouldn't. And that's why I'm not going to give Kenny Pickett so much flack. Because the Pittsburgh Steelers ultimately mishandled that man's career. Pairing him with Matt Canada telling him one thing, doing a completely different thing. Ultimately, Kenny Pickett getting traded to Philadelphia is saving him so much strife by not being under the microscope of Pittsburgh itself. He has gone from hometown hero to villain in the matter of a week. There's this narrative of him being a crybaby whiner. It doesn't help that he's got like this weird comb over hair that makes him look like a rejected 80s villain. Like the narrative of Kenny Pickett has flipped on its head and nobody takes into account that these things that the organization has done have derailed his career. Ultimately, it's probably a good thing he's in Philadelphia. Now this is just me, in my opinion, and looking at it from an outsider's perspective. I, I don't know anything what goes on inside the Pittsburgh Steelers like organization. But if you look at it objectively and you say, well, this is what happened here and this is what happened here, it all makes sense. You can line up the dots. I guess all I'm saying is like, I'm not going to be too mad at Kenny Pickett for going to Philadelphia. I'm not going to be mad at him for not competing for the position because the Pittsburgh Steelers dropped the ball on the Kenny Pickett era. I've heard a lot of things about Mac Jones in the past couple weeks, about how New England failed to help him develop. They paired him with Matt Patricia as an offensive coordinator for some reason, and then he got traded to the Jaguars. And I hear all of this, this attention about Mac Jones and how the New England Patriots failed that man. But you don't hear the same thing about Kenny Pickett. You hear about how Kenny Pickett is no longer a competitor. You don't hear about how Matt Canada's offense sucks and how that might have affected his development. You don't hear that. Instead, Kenny Pickett's a villain. He's not Mac Jones. The Pittsburgh Steelers didn't fail him. I hate that. I hate how one narrative surrounds one player and another narrative surrounds another player, and it's the same type of situation. The system failed those players. And I mean, that happens sometimes. But I'm not gonna 
paint Kenny Pickett as the villain. If anything, I'm going to say the Steelers dropped the ball there, and that sucks. Yeah, just a little video I want to put out. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Do that thing where you like and subscribe. It's the end of the video. You've probably already clicked off by now. But, yeah.